I'm Dave Mercer. And I'm Matt Pangrak. And welcome to The Call, a weekly sport fishing debate show where we take a hot topic from the sport of fishing and debate it. And this week's topic is forward-facing sonar should be banned from the Elite Series. Keep our call, Panger. I think we're the first two that's ever talked about this, Dave, in the yeah, last three years. Yeah, nobody's talking about it. Probably one of, one of the hottest topics is a forward-facing sonar, regardless of what brand. Now you've got a brand that you can just like lock on it. And it doesn't move. It's crazy. You're seeing out in front of the boat, on the sides of the boat, behind the boat. Here's the thing that gets me about this, Dave. When side imaging came out, when Steve Kennedy was in his garage trying to build side imaging out of 75 transducers that he towed behind the boat, which is a slight exaggeration, but kind of true. When that came out, was anybody saying, well, side imaging should be banned. Now we can find brush piles on every point in just two passes. When the flasher went to 2D, where the flasher guys saying 2D should be banned. When the paper graph went to flashers, where the paper graph guys saying the flashers should be banned. You're mixing evolution here, but you're not taking the timetable into account. So we can't go back in time, Dave. But my question to open up this debate is, at every major advance in fishing electronics, was there a segment of that population that said that the next stage should be banned? Probably, I would assume. Well, you're older than me. I thought maybe you would actually... No, no, I I mean, I remember people complained about everything the whole way along. I just think that this one seems so much bigger because we're in a world where everybody has a voice. I mean, when a lot of those things came out, even side imaging, if you look at how recent that is, but literally... That was pre-social media. Before, 2010, 2011, 2009, yeah, before, right around there. Yeah, it was before Twitter, before Instagram. Exactly. So people, not everybody had a voice. So I'm sure as many people felt it, but I think you hear it a lot more now just simply because everybody has a voice due to social media of some sort. That's a fantastic point. I would also like to throw this at you before I give my final verdict on this. On Bass Talk Live, I recently interviewed two-time tackle warehouse pro circuit angler of the year, Michael Neal. And I reviewed the 12 regular season events that he competed in where he kicked everybody's butt for the last two years. Forward-facing sonar played a major factor in four of those. And over half of them said he could have taken it off his boat. Still beat everybody, still finished up number one. Not the end-all, be-all. That's the guy who's dominating right now. Played a role, played a factor, helped him in some events. But, I mean, if this thing is the giant killer that it's supposed to be and all you have to do is point it and see the fish, you, you'd think Michael Neal would use it exclusively in more than four or five of these things instead of a tool. It's a tool. It's a tool, day. I think, I think it is a tool. I do agree with you. And before we move on from Michael Neal, I mean, he is literally the most underrated professional angler Alive right now. I mean, to do what he's done, go back to back angler of the year. Amazing. But look at look at John Cox. I mean, literally, John Cox had it in the back of his truck for three events last year and did not install it. Why? I don't want it to confuse me. I think that forward facing sonar live sonar is a major game changer. The most overused word in fishing. But the difference is it's not the same thing that people think that haven't used it. I think it has a, when you talk about live, like they think that every fish is easily sayable and it's like, it is a tool. It's got a time and a place. I mean, I'm not for stopping any of this stuff, but I also have to play devil's advocate because as soon as I say, well, no, no, it should be legal. I think it's okay. You're going to have somebody in the comments say, well, If it's okay, how come the Alabama rig was not okay? How come other things are not okay? They're just tools, right? How do you defend that, Panger? Because you can go to other sports. You use a baseball bat, but you don't use an aluminum baseball bat in Major League Fishing. Now, there's not saying that I would be opposed to maybe parameters on the forward-facing sonar. Maybe you have forward-facing sonar that has limited capabilities as far as distance that you can see out, just like you have the multi-rig lures or just like you have a wood bat versus an aluminum with an ounce drop on it. Everything has parameters. Yeah, if you're a golf guy, you can make a ball and a club that hits at 500 yards. Look at the long drive. They have yeah. shaft limitations. They have 460cc limitations. They have golf ball component 
but it still doesn't stop the evolution of the game. And this game is all about evolution and about an edge. And when you stop innovating, you run into stagnation. And the innovation is what draws the excitement, is what drives the industry, is why both you and I were recently at ICAST in Orlando, Florida, excited to see the innovation and what is going on. And in that quest, the whole point is catch more fish, put more fish in the boat, enjoy your time on the water, make the most out of your investment in your vessel and your electronics. And I think forward-facing sonar, when used properly and understood, is a great asset to anglers of all skill levels, including those at the top of the game, but does not make a professional a professional, just like it doesn't make an amateur angler a professional. It's a tool in your box that you can use and should be continued to be able to use. So what do you think of the musky tour making it illegal? Is that the first of many tours or do you just think, because my take on that is, is it's at the musky world may be at a different stage than the bass world. What happened in the bass world is everybody ended up getting it and embracing it. I think what you saw in that situation is you had just a small amount of teams that have embraced it and they literally stomped the competition. Like we're talking, they caught 10 and the rest of the competition caught two. So I think in a situation like that, it gets dealt with a lot quicker, like an Alabama rig, for example, mm -hmm. like that was something that came out and people thought, no, the, you'll never be able to compete without it. But really, all of these things just end up situational advantages. I mean, an Alabama rig is the best lure on the lake to throw at times, but there is times you can throw an Alabama rig and not catch crop. And I think the same thing will happen with forward facing sonar. Fish are Oh, you're already hearing anglers say they're getting aware of it. So why would the Muskie Tour have reacted the way they did? And to steal a line from John Sokup, yes, we're talking about Muskie. First of all, it's not like they banned it for all eternity. They banned it for the final two events of that professional Muskie okay. Tour season. They said they would then look at it during the off season. I also think that comparing Muskie to bass is like comparing apples to oranges. A lot of the musky individual fish territory, more of a hunting type deal through my limited, very limited musky experience. Whereas uh, a, a bass is, is a totally different creature. Like I said, it's, it's, it's apples to oranges. So maybe there's a, a difference when you're hunting one as opposed to when you're hunting many or looking for structure or using it in a different way. I don't know the musky game well enough, but... I thought it was a bold stop. And from what I can tell, they actually pulled their organization through a number of different ways. And the majority of those anglers did it. But like I said, two tournaments and they are going to revisit it. I think it's interesting. Do I think that there might be a place in the future for no electronics tournaments, no forward facing sonar trails? Yeah. I mean, there's tournaments where you have 150 horsepower max, 18 foot boats. If that's your jam, you can go hop in those. And if you've got a smaller boat and don't have it, but as a whole, Dave, should forward-facing sonar be banned? Uh, I'm calling that. No, it shouldn't be banned. It's here. It's here to stay. I enjoy watching it, and I enjoy how the guys figure out new, unique ways to use it every event. I totally agree with you. I do not think it should be called. I, or I, 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 well, you know, I you know think I it should thinking, be called. Forward-facing sonar should be banned? Call that. No. Don't ban it. No, I don't want it banned. I don't want it banned. You're keeping but I the forward-facing sonar keeping the forward facing sonar. And I would like to keep an eye on it though, because I will say this, it's getting better and better and better. And as it continues to get better, like you said, big birth of drivers, you can buy as big a one as you want. You can buy one the size of my head, Panger, and we can go to top golf and have the time of our life. But if we want to fish, if we want to compete in the PGA, we can't use that big Bertha. So I would say, keep it. It's okay. Don't get worried. It'll all work out, but keep your eye on it. That's I'd my take. live golf if they had 600 CC drivers. Oh, I bet they got them coming. That live golf is something a familiar kind of.